Home to nearly 9 million people and one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world, New York City is one of the most diverse and exciting cities in the United States. And when it comes to its residents, it can be argued that no one loves and is prouder of their hometown than New Yorkers. But as is the case with everything in life, love has its limits. And as much as the residents of NYC adore the hustle and bustle and kinetic energy of the city that never sleeps, there are some things that they downright hate about it. But before we begin, we just like to make a few comments. First, we're well aware that not all New Yorkers will agree with all of the content in this video. And second, we'd like to issue a fair warning to those of you out there that aren't from New York City. Please be aware that just like a family, though these are things that some New Yorkers hate about their city, it is still their city. And therefore, they are of the mindset that these are things that only they are allowed to publicly say about it, not you. Now let's begin. Number five, tourists. Okay, it's not that New Yorkers actually hate tourists, it's more so the things that some tourists do or don't do that annoys New Yorkers. Things like walking slow like Wounded Turtles 3 and 4 abreast on the sidewalk while blocking the flow of traffic, or stopping abruptly in the middle of the sidewalk to take pictures and admire the big pretty buildings or looking at Google Maps on their phone to figure out where the Statue of Liberty is. Things like standing on the left of the escalator instead of to the right to let others pass, or stopping at the top or bottom of the subway stairs to figure out where they are or to congregate, or blocking the turnstiles as they try to figure them out. In the words of one New Yorker, we understand and appreciate that you're on vacation, but we're on our way to work. So please, move! Number 4. The Smell Here's the thing, folks. There are a lot of people in New York City. And when we say a lot, we know you're saying to yourself, yeah, I know that. But we seriously doubt that most people truly know or understand the numbers. There are nearly 9 million people in New York City. And not only is it the most populated city in the United States, with more than double the population of the second most populated city, Los Angeles, which has just over 4 million residents, but New York City also has a population density of 30,000 people per square mile, compared to Los Angeles' population density of just over 80,000 people per square mile, and the national average of just 80 people per square mile. And when you have that many people packed into such a tiny area, you're bound to get some weird smells. But why does the city smell so bad, you ask? Well, let's count the reasons. And these are in no particular order because the smell of New York City is just as much a mixture of different odors as the city is of cultures. Reason number six, the exhaust. The constant and recognizable odor in the city is fumes from traffic. And the streets of New York City are packed with thousands of cars, buses, taxis, and trucks that emit huge amounts of a noxious blend of exhaust and diesel into the atmosphere. Number five, body odor. Yeah, we know that New York has a lot of homeless people that obviously don't bathe. But let's be fair, there are people in the city that aren't homeless and that also have questionable hygiene habits. Now add a little bit of heat into that equation and you have a perfect recipe for a lot of funk. And we're not talking about that Rick James and George Clinton kind of good funk either. Number four, factories. Sitting along the Hudson and East Rivers are factories that release odors of incarcerated trash and chemicals into the air. And these scents make their way into the city and converge with the others. Number three, dog waste. Okay, let's go with the statistics that say that there are roughly 600,000 dogs in the city. Even if these stats are off by 100,000 or so, it wouldn't change the fact that there are a lot of dogs in New York City, which unfortunately means that you have hundreds and thousands of dogs that are not only peeing in doorways, alleyways, and on the sidewalks, but they are also pooping in these same locations. And a great number of these owners aren't picking up after them. Number two, human waste. New York City has one of the highest rates of homeless people in the country. And with so many homeless people in such a densely populated area, it's no surprise that the subway stations, stairs, streets, alleyways, doorways, and basically everywhere else without a roof is going to be filled with a stench of human pee and feces. And to be fair, many New Yorkers will tell you that they've also seen their share of those who weren't homeless, relieving themselves in the same locations. Number one, the trash. 
How much trash does nearly 9 million people produce? Tons. And when you have tons of trash sitting on the curb for hours at a time in the heat and humidity of a New York summer, things are going to get pretty rancid pretty quick. And at times, it smells like the ish has literally hit a thousand industrial-sized fans, making the stench of the city downright unbearable at times. Oh, hold on. We just got a, a text message from the union president of the Coalition of Rats for the local 831 in Manhattan. Uh, he said to please let you all know that um, on behalf of the local 831 Coalition of Rats, he would like to thank and commend the city on a wonderful job that they're doing in regards to their handling of the trash. Number three, the weather. Around mid-June, summer starts to ramp up in NYC, and the city that is often referred to as the melting pot suddenly begins to feel as if you're actually in one. And because the infrastructure is mostly made up of concrete and metal that trap the heat in, a temperature of 90 degrees outside of the city means that it'll probably register at around 100 degrees or more inside of the city. Also because we know that there are those of you out there that will say that places such as Texas, Florida and Arizona have higher temperatures in the summer than New York City, we would say that what you aren't taking into account are a few but major differences. The first is that NYC is a pedestrian city. And unlike those states and cities that are more spread out, people here aren't riding to work or from one location to another in air-conditioned V. There's a big difference between walking 30 minutes in 100 degree weather versus riding in an air-conditioned vehicle in 100 degree weather. And to add to the Big Apple being a pedestrian city, if you've never had to wait 20 to 30 minutes for a delayed train in the middle of the summer, believe us, it will make you curse like you've never cursed before. Second, unless you're living in a renovated or more expensive building, few apartments in the city actually have centralized air conditioning, and the window units in those older buildings are definitely not those of the higher end. Now, how's the fall season in New York City? Aside from that one perfect week in May, some say fall is probably the best and most beautiful time here. But then again, a fall in the city is kind of like a Sunday to some, where you start to feel a bit down because you know what's ahead. And what's ahead is the brutal cold winter of the city and its super dry air. And four hours of sunlight. Number two, the subway. What do New Yorkers dislike about the subway system? Here are a few of the most popular responses. Service disruptions and late trains. People talking way too loud on their phones or to somebody else. People listening to music or watching videos without headphones. People putting backpacks on empty seats or not taking them off at all. People who are dancing and twerking that nobody wants to see dancing and twerking. And onboarders that don't wait for people to get off first. Now, what do New Yorkers hate about the subway system? The feces on the stairway steps. The mystery fluids on the floors of the train. The people pacing and mumbling to themselves the random acts of violence and sexual harassment. And lastly, the mentally disturbed people and drug addicts that inhabit and live in the subway stations and trains. Number one, rent. In 1789, Benjamin Franklin famously said, the only three certainties in life are death, taxes, and ridiculous rent prices in New York City. Okay. He didn't actually say that, but the jaw-dropping rent prices in the Big Apple are as much a part of the city as Times Square and Broadway. So how much is the median rent for a one-bedroom apartment in New York City? As of January 2023, it comes in at around $4,000. And though you might hear someone say that they have a one-bedroom apartment that only costs them $2,000 a month, be aware that there is a great chance that they may be living in a rent-stabilized unit, have a roommate, or even living in another borough. Also in the city, factors such as the area that the building is located in, the condition of it, its amenities, and even others outbidding you all play major roles in the actual rent price. But regardless of all of those factors, one fact remains true for everyone that lives in New York City. Rent prices is the one thing that we all hate. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, we kindly ask that you please do us a favor and like this video and subscribe to our channel for more enjoyable content. Thanks for watching and we shall see you in the next video.